do you enjoy the television show, Pee Wee's Playhouse? It's a phantasmagorical kids program that many children loved watching until it was abruptly removed from syndication with no explanation given. To date, it's not really known what caused Pee Wee's Playhouse to be pulled from the air, but there are theories. As for me, I was working at Walmart when I noticed the tape in the $5 bin that seemed a little unusual. There was a picture of Pee-wee in a black electric chair with his arms bound. He was bleeding from the face. The quality was very low and grainy, and the title, GSFH-2301, The Pee-wee Murder Tapes, confused me something terrible. Now, there are times when you want to return to your past, to go back to when things were simpler and easier, and you had the whole world on a string. The moon on a stick. I could really go for moon pie right now. Anyway, I purchased this tape for five dollars and zero cents, double zero, but the register rung it up as six dollars and sixty cents, one zero. Must have been a weird coincidence. I asked them to do a price check, and it now rang up zero dollars and zero cents, three zeros, with the words void in a rather angry font on the 1990s register. I live in Alabama. I immediately went home after work and hooked my VHS player up. The last I had hooked it up was one, two, three, three years ago. I had found a lost episode of Golden Girls that I'd purchased from an elderly woman behind a counter in a small town. Hmm. I love Creed. Where B. Arthur was evidently a robot, but I could never get it to play. There's a theory about these lost episodes that's been swimming around these internets that we surf. They say that there's one insane man somewhere in the United States who edits and distributes all of them from his own defunct office run by a computerized receptionist. I'm not sure about that, but I, hesitantly, put the Pee Wee murder tapes on, knowing that there was something weird about it. Instead of the normal intro... Whatever happened to Cindy Lauper? I just saw an extremely large, zoomed-in picture of Marge Simpson. She was scowling, and her eyes had three pupils. Was this a Simpsons episode? The tape made a popping noise, and then the VHS got that depressing, grainy effect old VHS tapes often get. The intro to the actual episode started now. Pee-wee was angrily bicycling down the hill into the Easter Island segment of the island, but it looks like the spokes of his bike had given out. The sun is behind him. He hurtled into the side of the statue to the sound of a baby screaming, and then the episode just started. Pee-wee, played by Paul Rubens, and Paul Rubenfeld, walked out. His necktie was a little frayed. His normally combed hair was a little scraggly, and he had white powder on his neck. Pee-wee didn't say anything. He just went over to the fridge and got some milk, and he started drinking it. I was starting to think that something was wrong with Mr. Herman. He wasn't acting like his usual kid self. He just seemed angry. He fumbles with an air conditioning vent that seems to have been recently installed. I'm so hot! I feel like I'm crashing through the sun! <laughs> he sounded like Bill Cosby. He went into the booth where he usually phones people with a tin can and called Frankie Avalon, rather angrily demanding some potato print candy cane cutouts. If you don't get those potato print cutouts, it'll be by this weekend. It's going to be curtains for you. Ain't talking about theater. <laughs> he slammed the can phone and got out of the booth. If you keep this up, you're going to crash into the sun. What? Then the wall clock repeated it, ticking rather loudly. 
Is it a wall clock or a fucking parrot? Why did he sound so fucked up? He goes over and sits on Carrie, the living chair in his living room. He just sits there for three minutes, not doing anything. He started to go over his taxes. Please get off of me, Pee-wee, cries a muffled voice. It was Carrie, of course. You're a chair. But Pee-wee said, Next disturbed me further. Shut the hell up! You chair! You chair! All of a sudden, Flory, the discarded pieces of floor in Pee-wee's corner, started to cry. <laughs> I'm hungry, Pee-wee. I haven't eaten in weeks. Pee-wee goes over to the fridge and finds a bucket labeled Chum and pours bloody chunks into the floor, which he eats angrily. Highly realistic gore, including eyeballs and intestines, are devoured by the floor. More, the floor says. I need more. Give me some of that chum! <laughs> Pee-wee seemed really angry. Shut up! He said. I'm sick of all my furniture demanding things. If you want something, get up and get it yourself. Now how the hell could a floor get up? The marionette Randy was on his shoulder. He was clinging to his back, but not doing anything. All of a sudden, Pee-wee got... excited. It's time for the secret word! He ran over to where he usually gets the secret word, and he was excited, but he still looked a little disheveled. He peeled the paper with the secret word in it. The secret word is... Urethra. Pee-wee went over to the window, stared out of it, paranoid. The lighting was very bizarre. You could see the light of explosions reflecting as the shade of the window blinds cascaded onto his face. Instead of telling what are presumably the viewers, he merely whispers while staring through the blinds. Now remember, whenever anyone says the secret word, you need to scream very loud. As loud as you can. I want you to scream! <laughs> he laughed and his head snapped back as though there was something wrong with him. Let's give it a try! He went over to Globy. A globe. Hey, Globy! How's your large prostate feeling? Globy sighed. Ugh, not too good today, Pee Wee. I feel a special pain while urinating. I feel as though there's broken glass in my urethra. The words urethra appeared on screen and flashed while everyone in the playhouse screamed. The screaming wasn't the normal playhouse screaming. It seemed rather horrified, as though someone was truly experiencing a disturbed episode. Oh, the lights flickered on and off. You could see skeletons dancing in the background. When the lights returned to normal, the skeletons vanished, but the camera was zoomed into Pee-wee's face. He was wide-eyed and looked truly horrified. Pee-wee paused and laughed. It was then that I realized something was off. Cowboy Curtis lay dead in the corner. You may have known him as the guy who played Morpheus in the Matrix, but back then, he was Cowboy Curtis, a cowboy. I mean, I guess he was dead. His face was down on moving. Pee-wee dragged the slump body into the kitchen behind the counter. All of a sudden, the King of Cartoons entered. I love the King of Cartoons. I was so excited to see what cartoon you'd play this week. He entered, adorned in his wondrous garb, to the sound of trumpets. Hello, Pee-wee. I am the king of cartoons. I know you are. We were just making some spider cider. 
It's cider made from spiders. Say it three times fast, if you will. Spider cider, spider cider, spider cider, spider cider. The government calls that a lot of spider. <laughs> Pee Wee kicked up his heels and poured some spicy spider cider in the King of Cartoons goblet. He took a sip. Oh! <laughs> the King of Cartoons yelled. The spider seemed to be too spicy. He had visible burns on his mouth and his face seemed to be ballooning up. Would you like some red to side with that? Pee Wee smiled. This tastes like the stun! Just place the cartoon! He directed to no one in particular. The cartoon played, but it wasn't a cartoon at all. It was a shot of a dark alley in real life. Someone had made little drawing lines to make it look drawn, but it clearly wasn't. It was Pee Wee, or Paul Rubens, felt. He had long hair and a beard and looked like a convict. He went to the movie theater, purchased two tickets for a movie called Nurse Nancy. He went to an empty theater, sat down with some popcorn, and smiled to himself. You could hear the sound of something unzipping as the King of Cartoons screamed. Stop the tape! He yelled. What? I can't hear you. You have a speech impediment. The tape continued to play until he visibly saw the King of Cartoons run over and smash the projector with his shoe. He kneeled over. He looked like he was about to have a heart attack. Baby ran over and joyously kicked Loby across the tile like a basketball. Terry the Pterodactyl went to talk to Pee-wee, but Pee-wee held his mouth shut. He opened the King of Cartoons' mouth and poured some water in. So, Pee-wee said, Who's your favorite R&B gospel artist? The king of cartoons looked bloodshot. He was clearly in pain. <sighs> so, who is your favorite R&B gospel artist? Wolf! The king of cartoons looked like he was having a heart attack. But he answered, Well... I was this then, as this this braces, but my favorite has to be Eretha Franklin. Eretha <laughs> Franklin. Eretha Franklin. All of a sudden, everyone started to scream again. The secret word. A screen started to flash as everyone screamed in pain, agony, torture. The King of Cartoons stopped moving. The skeletons popped in out frame. Sick Semper Tyrannis, Pee Wee yelled as the shadow of the Clamation dinosaurs were shown. Randy was on Pee Wee's shoulder, looking very sinister, whispering into his ear, We have to get rid of all of it! Every last fear is fear! The next scene, everything was back to normal, but blood trailed the floor. Conky the robot rolled over the King Cartoons, screamed something at this point, I don't know what the hell he said. It was clear his voice, but it seemed to have clipped in from the prior scene. It sounded like you put your dick in the magic screen. Whatever that means. No one was at the door. Conky may have been broken. Terry flew by. Play with me, the Pee-wee! The singing flowers started to sing Pee-wee! Give us water, give us water, give us water, you will slaughter! Globy started to spin around. He was still on his side for being kicked earlier. It's getting hotter. Pee-wee looked paranoid as all hell. His eyes were bloodshot. He looked legitimately scared. I'm sick of my home bothering me. So much noise. <laughs> noise! Noise! 
He went into the kitchen, opened the fridge, and saw the claymation vegetables dancing. Tears started to drip down his face. <laughs> I think it's time I made a wish, Pee-wee said. He knocked angrily on Zombie's window. Oh, you may remember, Zombie. The disembodied head that granted wishes. Instead of Zombie, a more skull-like figure was inside the black case. Pee-wee started to talk to it. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest. Of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now, how born to my imagination it is. I go to it. Mecca, lecca, hi, mecca. Shut the flying fuck up, you asshole pedophile. Zombie interrupted. I was very confused by the cursing. I, I didn't know what a urethra was until I used Wikipedia, but I guess that was okay because it was a scientific term, right? Listen to me, Pee-wee, the zombie school said. The furniture and the floor and all of the toys have been conspiring for some time. Pee-wee just scratched some powder off his neck. You and I both knew this day was coming, Pee-wee. You've been disillusioned for quite some time, but we have to put an end to the furniture. And the noise! <laughs> yes. All of this noise that fills up our lovely house. We need the silence, Pee-wee, to put an end to that incessant ringing in our ears. I wish. I wish I could put an end to all this noise. Zombie smiled warmly. <laughs> Your wish is my command, Master. He nodded and leered to the left. A chainsaw was in the corner. Pee-wee seemed a little different now. He picked up the chainsaw and revved it. There was a shot of Flory covered in blood with a crown in his mouth. Can you guess where that came from? Randy was whispering into Pee-wee's ear again. Globy spun around. What are you doing, Pee-wee? Some, uh... Hedge trimming? Oh, I'll trim the hedges, he said. Let's give this mother trim! <laughs> he slammed the chainsaw onto Mr. Window, a window in Pee Wee's house. It started to scream as blood sprayed from the broken glass and spurted in fountains from the sill. And what about this one? <laughs> Pee-wee swung back and slammed the chainsaw on the clocky. The USA-shaped clock was spinning dial T. <laughs> the clock screamed as the teeth went flying. More blood began to pull out. Sorry. Wait, 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 what are you doing, Pee-wee? The robot conky came back and Pee-wee drove the chainsaw right down the center with great vitriol. Sparks and plastic flew everywhere as the robot screamed. The house is alive, it screamed. The house is alive. The side of the head flew off and slammed into the open refrigerator. Most of the claymation food had melted or decayed because the fridge had been left open. The head smashed into the back of the fridge with such force, the whole thing fell over, splitting Cowboy Curtis' head like a melon. Like a melon. Pee-wee's gone mad! Pee-wee stomped on Globy, spewing blood everywhere. He drove the chainsaw straight down into Flory, but spit up the guts and bones of several dead people, including Mrs. Devon, that erupted across the dirty floor. Pee-wee was up to his ankles in blood. He broke magic screen, ripped Terry's strings off, and murdered the entire puppet band. He never liked beat poetry. He had killed everything now, and he was all alone. Highly realistic gore lay all over the floor as he laid in silence. 
I began to make the possible theorization that to some extent a possibility, mind you, this particular episode of the Pee Wee Herd program was a little bit off. All of a sudden, it started to snow. Beautiful childhood snow rain from the window. Pee Wee licked his lips. He lay there alone in silence as he began to deteriorate. He seemed worn now, tired, older. The playhouse door opened, and at first it seemed like nothing had entered. Well, nothing did enter, but I think I started to see it. A skeleton in a robe roller skated into the room. He kneeled next to Pee Wee. The skeleton was ne wearing a name tag that read Ethra. The skeleton smiled. Who I am I? Ethra. Pee Wee sighed, coughing up blood. Who am I? He repeated. <coughs> <coughs> now came a tooth. <coughs> Ethra, he said. You are Ethra. That is correct. The skeleton paused. Who am I? You're Pee Wee. Your name seems to be your Ethra. Pee Wee tried to yell. He now noticed that this may have been the Grim Reaper. Ooh, Pee Wee had uh, some lines prepared for this particular, especially for this particular arrangement. He started to ramble. Clearly. Give me your pardon, sir. I have done you wrong. But pardon, as you are a gentleman. This presence knows, and you must needs have heard how I am punished with a sore distraction. A sore distraction. The skeleton sighed and produced a screwdriver. <laughs> Pee Wee screamed. <laughs> Pee Wee had said the secret word. The screen flickered to thousands of skeletons, thousands upon thousands of skeletons, as far as I could see. A long, eternal passage of skeletons that was neither CG, drawn, nor real life. Not scary either. <laughs> The skeletons seem to be rather happy. Drinking beer, listening to rock music, and partying. The show ended with Pee Wee riding his bicycle, but there was a strange narration that never appeared before. His teeth appeared silver. I enjoyed the familiar music, but the other talking was strange. Life exists because we fear death. Every flower by the sun, every ticking clock, is death's message. But now it seems apparent that death does not exist at all. I'm a type within your mind. On a type within a type. A dream within a dream, if you will. And if you look too closely at everything, you realize... Everything's been looking at you. <sighs> Pee-wee rode off into the sun and quickly burst into flames. <laughs>